Peace. This week in astrology, April 25th to May 2nd. We're going to talk about um, the article. Uh, this is just the video accompanying, accompanying the article. The article will be available on www.hoodmystic.com. Um, we got a new moon in Taurus happening tomorrow. Um, I hope everybody's excited. I mean, I know I am. Uh, so we're dealing with Taurus energy. What is Taurus energy? Taurus is teaching us about the nature of desire and how we transform our desire into spiritual realizations. And how do we do that? We release personal attachment so that our souls can lead the way and not our intellect and not our mental and not our mind because our mind has been infiltrated and this human existence is flawed. So we want to tap into what's perfect and what's spiritual um, and Taurus is helping us see that. Uh, we are beginning to manifest and take those steps into our spiritual journey um, from Aries into Taurus. In my, la in my last video, we talked about Aries being more of the creation. This is more of a manifestation of that creation and allowing us to see the material or the manifestation. Taurus is an earth sign. Um, so ultimately with this new moon, the sun and moon being in conjunct in Taurus, uh, we need to start to change some core behaviors and really not simply change them for no reason, but actually change them because we understand that we have negative habits based on our humanity. So ultimately, we want to change these behaviors for the better. So the energy available to us now is to really step and as we go on, um, the the, the article is centered around the new moon in Taurus and the supporting transits that actually support them. It's like a story. And that's why I love astrology because it's never like left to center. It always tells a beautiful story. So, there we go. Just going to share this on my timeline and get back into the build. And then you're dealing with uh, manifestation. So us not changing our core beliefs and core behaviors, then we will have to deal with those consequences. So ultimately, we're going to talk about some glyphs today. The Taurus glyph is actually a moon. It's a full moon on top of a crescent or on the bottom of a crescent moon. So... We got to understand that, you know, even the universe, they call it the Milky Way. That's why ancient people venerated and adored and valued the cow. Um, even, and if you listen to a cow, the cow actually says, you know, moon. So we, we understand that this is a powerful time whenever the moon is in Taurus. And whenever we have a new moon in Taurus, or sometimes we have a full moon when the sun is in Scorpio. Um, but anytime that the moon is in Taurus, we're dealing with a powerful, powerful energy of manifestation. And those manifestations aren't always positive. Um, if you think about April, it's a lot of deaths that happen in April. Um, so generally, we have to be on the right path. And we'll get into that too. So really understanding that with this double moon energy, abundance being available, but are we willing to make those necessary core changes? Um, dealing with changes, we, we segue into Venus and in its retrograde now going direct. 
but this direct is actually a part of the retrograde because this is a part of the sky that Venus went over when it was actually retrograding. But now, instead of it being retrograde and being direct and entering Aries from Pisces where we have a, a, a sign of indecision, Aries is more assertive. So decision making needs to be made in the areas of love and the areas of appreciation. Um, we've been mulling over these changes in our love lives for probably the past six months and it intensified over the past three months. But now we're in the phase of this is just what it is and really living with that. Um, so very interesting time. Um, a lot of people may leave the ones that they're with, but a lot of us will decide to stick it out and really, really start to appreciate the ones that we are with and not really have all of this Pisces indecision floating around in our head. So it's actually a wonderful time um, into another retrograde. <clears throat> we have Mercury retrograde and um this retrograde is all over Uranus. So it goes over Uranus direct. Then it goes retrograde back over Uranus. And then it's going to go direct um, a week from now again and go back through Uranus. So honestly, what this, what this Mercury retrograde is really trying to do is inspire us to be original and start to make our personal stamps on the world. I'm sure I'm not the only one that feel it. I know we all feel that general pressure to really make something of our lives. So now the energy being available, we need to take advantage of that energy with Mercury doing his dance with Uranus. And so it's 7.5 billion people in the world. So it's not to say that you have to live a particular lifestyle, but a general personal stamp in your life to make you feel comfortable only you can decide that but that energy is available so take some time over the next two weeks to really figure out how are you going to leave your personal stamp on this planet um because instead of dealing with that tension that tension is a sign to really start to work with it because now it's time to make those changes it may have been times where you've had these thoughts but never felt that tension to really put action behind it so it's a wonderful time um and this all goes back to the new moon and as far as changing those core behaviors and really doing it for the better and even this because we because we dealt with three retrograde planets we dealing with venus we dealing with mercury and finally we're dealing with saturn saturn retrograde and sagittarius and we're going to get back into the glyphs and we're going to talk about saturn what does that look like as a glyph it's a celtic cross on top of a sickle so when you think about a celtic cross it's a cross that's even on all sides so that's union that's perfection that's success that's um rewards but it's on top of a sickle meaning that the restriction in the cutting is necessary to get to the top you start at the bottom so Saturn as a young person it really puts us through a lot but as we get older we learn from those things and we become more older people have a better grasp on life than younger people generally because they just learn through fucking up but we just slow to come so generally that's what Saturn is all about. Um, so if we're not, so don't be afraid of the restrictions. Don't be afraid of the limitations because, you know, that's what perfection looks like. Perfection does not look like, you know, just you doing whatever the fuck you want to do. Um, actual discipline is actually, and um, I'm talking about Saturn because it's square in Chiron, which is actually... Um, a healing aspect so whenever you get an aspect to Chiron is giving you something that you could do to actually heal yourself so with this square in Chiron 
that's basically saying the limitations and the restrictions that we put on whatever house that Saturn seems to be in when you were born or how it how the synastry is in your chart these are the areas that you want to tighten up on uh, me personally Saturn is in my second house um, so I generally know that this is a period for me to not um, spend my money but to rather save my money and build my money and do more constructive things with my money and that's actually going to heal the past of the times where I wasted money so that's me and my chart but it might be something different you just plug yourself in to the thing the overall concepts that I'm giving so so just to backtrack um, what we talked about we talked about the new moon being in Taurus and the moon in Taurus being exalted meaning that abundance is available but with these retrogrades venus mercury saturn um there is work that needs to be done for that abundance so it's not it's not general it's, it's all metaphysical and it's all spiritual so the Venus retrograde is about your love life and the areas of love that you keep going over and over again. You come back and forth. Should I go here? Should I be with Tim? Should I be with Bob? Um, Mercury is, okay, I'm not trying to do it everybody's way. I'm trying to do it my own personal way. So, so your love life might interfere with your Mercury, with you being a soul, an individual soul. So really understanding these retrogrades and really understanding that it requires work and assessment of your own personal truths. And then with your relationships, them not holding you back to previous beliefs. Because when you assess and you change and you realize that makes no sense. You need to be able to voice that with people around you. And you voicing those changes is a clear indicator of who needs to be in your life and who, need, who needs not to be in your life. Because people should support you as you change, as you go on this journey. Because like I said, this new moon is about taking that initial step in that journey and really starting to manifest these things. So ultimately... We get down to Saturn in the retrograde, and really what Saturn represents is perfection. Saturn represents union, but it also represents a sickle, which means you got to cut all the bullshit to get to that perfection. So, with that being said, the article will be on hoodmystic.com. It's just the video portion. Um, I'm going to put it on YouTube. It'll be on the site, so you could go um, over it. I'm just really trying to give you all a heads up of this energy, um, because, you know... I don't want y'all walking around in the rain with no umbrella, no raincoat. But with that being said, I'm going to sign out. Um, thanks for watching. Peace.